If you've got to get rid of a bloodsucker, you usually call witchers or the dawn guard. But it's not so simple if you go with the witchers. Firstly, they might just get drunk with the vampire and secondly, it can all end with the witcher screwing the bloodsucker and not in the way you would like. And it's not what you expect when you hire a witcher, so the dawn guard can guarantee that your vampire will perish. And I'll gladly show you how to make a helmet for the reliable vampire hunters. This is the detail for the future crest of the helmet. At first I hammer out the volume on the oval pit. The thickness of the plate is 1.2 mm 30 HDSA steel. After stretching out the initial shape, regular manlings have to shape the rib on the chisel for a long time. But we do it like this. God save the evolution of the Euchre reptilians. It's great to get inspired with new ideas after hard work. The sponsor of this video, Raid Shadow Legends, will surely help with it. Raid has hundreds of artifacts to equip and over 600 champions with unique skills. I especially like the Bannerlord faction. For example, the arms of Reglin have some features of the 16th century arms. Pay attention to the elbow guard and how elegantly it protects the inside of the elbow. Also, Reglin is a true monster in arena and her revive kit is very useful virtually everywhere. And the High Elf faction has a different design. I really like the Royal Guard helmet. Maybe I'll make such a helmet out of steel one day. Royal Guard has an extremely powerful ability that scales damage based on enemy max HP. There has been a new dungeon released this month, the Iron Twins Fortress. If you take it down, a new feature is unlocked, being able to awaken your champions. Awakening your champions lets you choose a powerful blessing that can transform how they perform in battle. The Death Knight has now been released in new super-powered legendary version, the Ultimate Death Knight. To get him for free, all you have to do is log in for 7 days straight between now and October 27th. Use the promo code DKRISES to instantly level up your new champion to level 50. Promo code is available for both new and existing players. And if you haven't started playing Raid yet, click my link in the description or scan my QR code here on the screen and you'll get unique bonuses worth $30, such as the Epic Champion, Rector of Dreath, 200k Silver, 1 Energy Refill, 1 XP Boost and 1 Ancient Shard. All of this treasure will be waiting for you here and thank you so much to Raid for sponsoring this video. Now I need to make holes in our crest. I heard the Homo sapiens use a drill and a twist bit for that. Surprisingly, this outdated method works. The crest is done, so I move on to the next detail. Its thickness is 1.2 mm as well. The helmet will be used in cosplay. For the tournaments with steel weapons, you need your head protection to be 2 or 3 mm thick. Otherwise, you might get injuries. A slight bulge can be achieved without hitting, but the further bending of the edges requires the detail to be hard. It's uncomfortable to hit up such curved and thin detail in the traditional furnace. So I'm using the propane cutter with oxygen, which quickly hits up any part of the curved detail. I'm hammering it out by hand so that I don't have to drag it out and moving on to the shaping of the side details. They are a bit curved, it can be achieved by hammering it on a pit. Now I am assembling everything together. It's better to do some jobs when the details hold each other in the needed shape. After assembling everything, I heat up the lower edge so that I can bend it outwards as on the original Skyrim design. Ha! 
helmet is not done yet, but the shape is almost finished and it has some protective abilities. It's a wild mix of a top helm and a bar build, and it looks incredibly brutal and will definitely cause some anal pains of history reenactors. This will be a shaped plate that is purely decorative. I remove the part of the crest that is covered by the new overlap, so that it won't add to the weight. The next detail is wiser. The thickness is 1.2 mm thick. The shape is quite primitive, it is achieved by simply bending it. There is a difficult spot on the visor, triangular bending in the bottom that is stretched out with heating. It's a quite strange element of the steel helmet that should theoretically have medieval features. I haven't seen anything like this either in 14th century or the 16th. The overlap on the visor is the last detail I have to make. The simplest way to achieve such a pattern is to use masking tape. Similar overlaps were used on the medieval top helms. This is the 2 mm thick steel, and this is the magic of the ancient Ukrainians. Don't try this at home if your biopassport doesn't say that you are common Ukraine reptilian. All of the helmet details are finished. Unlike the original design, this helmet has prolonged parts on the visor, so that it could be raised. Now it's time to make small details. For example, the holes on the visor. According to the original design, they are placed only on the lower part. Such holes make breathing easier. I decided to bend the edges of the eye splits a bit outward. This is how it was done on the medieval top helmets and some other visors. It increases the strength and the stubs have a barrier in the shape of an edge. I'm punching out the symbol of the Dawn Guard. It would be simpler to make a stump and do a relief with it. I've done it in my last video about shoulders, but it requires the plates to be flat. But my overlay is figured, so now I'm hammering out this symbol by hand. My sacred duty is to annihilate vampires. This inscription is engraved on the back of the helmet. The helmet is made out of 30 HDC steel, so I'm quenching it in water after it was heated up to 820 degrees. After quenching, I heat it up to 300 degrees, leaving it in for half an hour and then cool it in the water again. The force scale is stuck to the surface, so I dissolve it in water with orthophosphoric acid. One liter of acid requires around 8 liters of water. I leave it in for 45 minutes. Now the scale is easily removed even by hand. I clean the surface on the inside and outside. I cover the inside surface with a colorless varnish. It will protect against rust while leaving the authentic signs of handwork visible on the steel.
the final stage of assembly. I am using the rivets with semi-spherical caps. The riveting is done from the inside by a round striker of the small hammer. And here are the last rivets. Here the riveting is done from the outside with the final shaping of the semisphere by a special cap tool. The helmet is finished. The visor can be raised but can't be fixated in the closed position. It's unacceptable in sports fencing, but medieval helmets often didn't have fixation. Probably so that you could raise the visor quickly. The sword that I have in my hands was done by a master from the channel FunLab 3D. It is made out of plastic. There's no helmet liner in the helmet yet. I'm going to sew it in behind the scenes. Although this helmet will be used in cosplay, it can be done for fights with steel weapons as well. For that we need to add visor fixation. The thickness should be no less than 2 mm. The neck protection needs to be added and some holes on the visor for better vision. And now it's time to thank the armed forces of Ukraine for the possibility to work in safety. It is priceless. Also thank you to RAID for the help with the content. And special thank you to the most devoted subscribers that donate to PayPal and Patreon. Your support makes this channel possible. I'd like to point out that during the war all the donations I use for volunteering.